St Paul's uh, to talk about Ludwig Feuerbach. He's a 19th century writer, thinker, philosopher, anti-philosopher, anti-theologian. One of the things that we associate with Feuerbach is really kind of thinking about um, what gets translated as species being, so what it means to be part of humanity as such and to think from the standpoint of humanity rather than, let's say, as a kind of individual um, or as a, as a, in relation to, to a god. Some of the ideas that Feuerbach uh, should be remembered for, some of his important ideas, um, ideas that influence Marx and other left-wing thinkers in the, around the middle of the 19th century, um, not only in Germany but in other parts of Europe where there's this very revolutionary situation, kind of questioning of old orders. Um, and what Feuerbach allowed these thinkers to um, really come to terms with was um, the criticism of Christianity. Uh, and not just Christianity, but uh, all kind of hierarchical models of thought, which included kind of political hierarchies, but also, I guess, the kind of the centrality of philosophy. And I guess one way he does this is really thinking through Christianity, what the structure of Christianity is. Um, and he argues that basically the, the secret of theology is anthropology. And this is one of his most famous claims, basically saying, you know, that, that what God is, what Christianity is, what all religions are, are basically projections of human desires and human fantasies. So if we have an image of God as this kind of infinite being, this all-knowing, all-powerful being, he says that, no, this is actually what we think humanity is capable of as a species, right? I may individually definitely not be capable of knowing everything, um, but Feuerbach says, as a species, we would be able to do that. And what we need to do is to take back that kind of projection, which we projected onto a kind of supreme being, um, and say, this is, no, this is true of humanity. It's not true of God, it's true of humanity as such. So religion, in a way, then fulfills some of our fantasies and our desires. Um, so there's an explanation for why people desire religion and why they desire God. But at the same time, there's also a kind of project there. So Feuerbach, um, in the book that we're looking at, which is the Fiery Brook, which is a collection of short manifesto-like uh, pieces and prefaces. Um, Feuerbach will talk a lot about what we need to do for the future. So it's a really kind of active uh, project in a way, and, and in, in that way you can really see why it would be important as a practical trigger for, for people like Marx. So turning away from a kind of theoretical speculation um, towards something which is more practical. Um, so, you know, Marx's famous quote about philosophers have only uh, interpreted the world, the point is to change it. And so it's Feuerbach who really allows uh, thinkers like Marx and these other young and left Hegelians um, to sort of challenge some of the orthodoxies of religion um, and philosophy as well. So would Feuerbach have felt at home in today's uh, new atheist uh, movement? Um, I'd say no, I'd have to say no. I think that Feuerbach um, in his analysis of um, Christianity in particular is actually very sympathetic to the content of Christianity in a way that the kind of today's new atheists um, are simply not. I think there's a lot of kind of um, sort of bullish, uh, belligerent quality to the way in which the new atheists kind of criticise uh, religion, but more often criticise religious believers, um, which I think often plays very into very dubious political positions, particularly in relation to uh, questions of Islamophobia and how that plays out in terms of foreign policy. And I, I think Feuerbach, on the other hand, was trying to understand what motivates religious belief. It's a kind of anthropology of religion. It's not a condemnation because in, in a sense he's very interested in the content of religion because religion clearly does serve a human need it's just that the form has kind of been corrupted so i think in that sense his kind of humanism is a very practical one it's a political one and it's still re relevant today